Hello everyone, and welcome to my General Hospital YouTube channel, I hope everyone is having a wonderful day. Before we begin, please hit the subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up. According to the General Hospital's spoilers for Wednesday, March 13, Curtis Ashford informed Marshall Ashford at the Savoy that he had discovered the doctor responsible for his initial misdiagnosis. The man's name was Dr. Paul Braddock, and he lived in a luxurious retirement home in Maryland. Curtis offered to take Marshall on a road trip where he could ask questions and learn the whole story. When Selena Wu barged in, she claimed to have information on who shot Curtis and pointed the finger at Jason Morgan. Selena stated she was tricked along with Curtis since Jason solely worked for Sonny Corinthos. Selena concluded that Sonny had faked assassination attempts and had a long-term strategy to acquire countries with Jason's assistance. Curtis questioned Sonny's authority after what happened to Dante Falconeri and in Puerto Rico, but Selena made excuses for everything and acted as if Sonny would kill anyone who stood in his way. Marshall suggested that they postpone their road trip after Selena left, but Curtis insisted on going forward with it so his father could have the closure he needed. Carly Spencer backed Jason, believing that he should have returned as soon as possible. Drew couldn't be with Carly since Jason came first in her heart, and she effectively accepted that he was a placeholder. Carly recognized Drew was dumping her, so she claimed she didn't mean to hurt him. Drew understood this, but he also felt compelled to cut his losses because he couldn't compete with Jason. When Drew stated he was letting her off the hook at Crimson, Carly inquired whether he was firing her. Drew acted as if they both knew Carly's heart wasn't in it, telling her to be careful before heading out. Drew hit the punching bag in the boxing gym to relieve stress. When Jordan Ashford appeared, she was astonished to learn Drew did not immediately believe Jason was innocent and wanted him imprisoned. Drew lamented about his split with Carly, and Jordan expressed her misgivings about her profession. Jordan seemed to miss working at the PCPD, but she wasn't a quitter and refused to abandon Laura Collins as her deputy mayor. Drew and Jordan eventually suggested that they meet to work together to improve Aurora and Port Charles' images. Carly caught up with Sam McCall outside Dante's room and revealed that Jason had been to see her. Sam was irritated with Carly for not asking Jason enough questions after she explained everything. If Jason was the reason Dante was hooked up to those machines in the ICU, Sam promised she'd never forgive him. Carly wished she could assist, so Sam advised her to call the cops if Jason approached her again. At the police station, Anna Devane reviewed the evidence with Sonny and urged him not to pursue Jason or the other suspect who had vanished. John Cates, Adam Harrington, arrived and appeared skeptical about Anna's rendezvous with Sonny. Despite John's attempts to get information from Harrison Chase, Chase refused to provide any details and insisted on trusting Anna. After Sonny revealed to Anna that he no longer knew Jason, Cates entered the questioning room. Sonny pushed Cates to put his badge to good use and find the bastard who shot Dante. Danny Morgan interrupted Michael Corinthos' night out with Willow Corinthos at the Quartermain Gatehouse to ask for a favor. Danny led Michael to the boathouse, where he was surprised to see Jason and began hugging him before Jason winced in agony. Jason realized he shouldn't be bringing Michael into this, but he seemed to think it was preferable to having teenage Danny engaged. Danny was upset that Jason had pushed him out of the loop, but he agreed to let Michael take him back to the main home. Instead, Michael assigned Danny to babysit at the gatehouse while he returned Willow to the boathouse, where she treated Jason's wound and handed him additional supplies. Jason was not delighted with Willow's involvement, but she made it obvious that he was now her patient, and that was that. When Michael indicated that Danny was minding the children, Jason understood they had more than one and received updates on Amelia Corinthos. Jason also said that Hamish was the one who fired at Dante, although he clearly felt responsible for Dante's condition. Willow discovered Jason sleeping with his weapon and covered him up after retrieving a blanket. Willow was pensive as she tenderly welcomed Jason home. 
Michael covered for Danny during a phone call with Ned Quartermain, acting as if they had just lost track of time playing video games. Michael then ordered Danny back to the main house, warning him to keep quiet about everything. According to General Hospital spoilers, more surprising Jason news is on the way, so we'll keep you updated on the twists and turns. CDL is the place to go for spicy General Hospital spoilers, predictions, updates, and news, so check back frequently for more GH information. According to General Hospital spoilers, Steve Burton is sticking around now that he has returned to his popular role as Jason Morgan. There has been some misconception on social media about how long Jason's homecoming will last, so Burton decided to clarify his situation. On an episode of the Daily Drama podcast, Burton discussed some inaccurate information and decided to settle any conflicts among fans who were disputing. It's evident that the writers aren't attempting to pull a gotcha in which Jason Morgan returns home only to depart again. Jason returns for a lengthy plot, giving him plenty of opportunity to reunite with everyone he left behind. Steve Burton stated rumors about him being on a three-month contract that would end with his fatal leave. That sparked some online debate, so Burton clarified the situation with some updates, given that he has been with the show for much longer. So, guess what? It is a two-year contract and I am not going to die, Burton insisted. That's fantastic news, as Jason Morgan's return has re-energized the program and created all kinds of new issues on canvas. It's been good to have Jason back in the spotlight, especially since his loved ones are divided on whether he's really the same man he once was. Of course, it will be intriguing to watch what happens once Burton fulfills his two-year deal. Will Burton sign on for more GH or hang up his leather jacket forever? In a prior interview with TV Guide, Burton admitted that he thought he had two to three years left of acting before moving on to pursue other interests. However, a lot can change in a few years, so Burton may decide to sign another deal after this one and stay for many more years. Regardless, Steve Burton is committed to PC for at least two years, so breathe a sigh of relief and enjoy the show. According to General Hospital spoilers, Jason will have to work his way out of some additional tough places, so we'll keep you updated on any predictions regarding the rough road ahead. Make CDL your go-to source for fascinating General Hospital spoilers, predictions, updates, and news. General Hospital, GH, spoilers reveal that there has been a lot of debate about Karen Wexler, last play by Marie Wilson, on the program recently, so we've got the inside scoop on this character who was first featured in 1992. Carrie Shane made her debut in the role, which she would play until 1994. In 1997, Jennifer Hammond took over the role of Karen on Port Charles, G.H.'s spin-off series. Marie Wilson was the final incarnation of Karen from 1999 until 2003. Karen was romantically involved with Jason Quatermain in high school, but John Jagger Cates genuinely stole her heart. Karen struggled with some unpleasant memories she had previously buried until she eventually met Jagger. Karen recalled the abuse she had undergone at the hands of her drunken mother's boyfriend, Ray Conway. After those memories returned, Karen began to spin out and eventually met Stone Cates, unaware that Stone was Jagger's younger brother at the time. Stone was the one who got Karen involved in Sonny Corintho's world. Sonny hired Karen to work as a stripper at the Paradise Lounge, and Karen became addicted to drugs around the same time. Karen finally ended herself in Sonny's bed, and GH fans have heard plenty of complaints from John, who believes Sonny exploited a vulnerable girl and made her life worse. Thanks for watching if you like this video, so please don't forget to subscribe my channel and don't miss any update.